Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. Unsettled conditions have become established in recent days. Are they set to continue through the next two weeks? Or is a change on the way? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 00 GMT, Thursday the 8th. At the outset, it's very similar to how it has been recently. Low pressure dominating the scene. It's bringing showers, downpours, and longer spells of rain to much of the country. In the short term, it gradually starts to push eastwards, but it will be staying showery. It could be some long spells of rain too. But then, as we head towards the weekend and through it, there are some indications of it turning drier at least for a time. This is 18 GMT, Saturday the 10th. But there is a lot of uncertainty really about what's going to be happening to the southwest. This is the remnants of Hurricane Danielle, and the way it interacts with the jet stream has been causing the computer models problems in recent days. But the view here from the GFS is that it's going to be heading towards Spain, bringing very wet conditions there. But there are indications of it turning wetter for a time across the UK as well. Then early next week, or towards the middle part of it at least, high pressure builds back and it's a dry finish Thursday the 15th of September here with dry conditions across much of the country. But a lot of uncertainty about just how that's all going to play out. The jet stream animation illustrates things quite well, but again, it's just a snapshot from one computer model run. Here is the uh, Hurricane Danielle. And as I run this, we see it's picked up by the jet stream and taken towards Spain. But it's quite an unsettled pitch for a time there across the UK as well. So, assuming that computer model run for GFS isn't too far off the mark, what does it mean for the temperatures which we can expect? 15 GMT Friday, maximums around 20, 21 Celsius, perhaps there in the east. Much depends upon the extent of cloud cover and the showers. It will be feeling quite warm still in sunny spells, although less so than it has done recently. Also, humidity levels will be somewhat lower. Going forwards to Sunday the 11th, fairly similar temperatures. Not too bad still for the time of year. Overnight lows also potentially quite high. Now, these are on Tuesday the 13th of September. Notice how in the southeast and East Anglia it's 18s, 19s or even 20. So very, very mild, muggy or quite warm, cooler in the northern half of the UK. And at this point, some of the computer runs are showing very warm air pushing up from southern Europe into at least central and eastern parts of England. I'll look at that a little bit later. And on the afternoon of Tuesday, maximums in the southeast here are 25 Celsius, 26. So it is warm, but really on this GFS from that warmth is just flirting with the southeastern corner. You can see there in northern France, values into the upper 20 Celsius. So that plume of warm air being pulled up from Southern Europe just really paying a glancing blow on this run to the southeast, but it's varying uh, from computer model run to computer model run. And this illustrates it quite nicely. Uh, the charts here are from the Canadian run. They're showing on the left temperatures on Tuesday, 27 Celsius there in the east. And the uh, chart on the right here is showing 850 HP A temperatures, so the air mass at about 1500 meters above sea level. The red and orange shading there indicating that very, very warm air moving northwards across much of Britain. The extent of it is more marked on this run than it is on the GFS, which the animation was based on, just really highlighting the uncertainty. I think it's probably about a 20 to 25% chance of it turning very warm, at least in the eastern half of Britain towards the end of the first week. Rainfall. 
These are the forecast totals for the days 0 to 5 period based on the ECM and GFS models, generally wetter in the north and the west, although the driest conditions are in the Western Isles. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 days period, totals have increased everywhere. The lowest ones are probably in central and eastern England, for example, East Anglia, around 15 millimetres on both of these charts. Remember though, they are just snapshots from individual model runs. So, how do the deterministic models compare to each other at one week ahead? As a recap, here is the GFS, which the animation was based on. It's showing quite a messy picture, really. The ridge of high pressure from the Atlantic beginning to topple across the UK, but quite changeable at this point. The Canadian model, the very, very warm air pushing northwards from Southern Europe, just beginning to be shoved away from the UK at this stage. The German icon, high pressure here, cooler air moving down from the north, showery as well, I would think, especially in the north of the UK. The ECM, low pressure, centered to the south, quite a changeable scenario as well. And finally, the UK Met Office, uh, low pressure here, positioned differently to some of the other model runs, ridge of high pressure there, just moving in across the UK. Significant differences there in the details between the different deterministics. Very, very difficult to be confident about how it will play out. What I will say though is that it's generally favoring a changeable picture towards the end of week one. There is a chance of it being very warm for a time in the eastern half of Britain, as I said, around 20%. So, how are things looking as we go through week two? With that uncertainty towards the end of the first week, it's just important as ever to emphasize that at this range, it's really just about trying to find the trends and the most likely possible outcomes. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. The air mass temperatures across the top start above the 30-year average, shown by the thick purple and the ensemble mean but it dips quite quickly and it then stays close to the 30 year norm, the thick black line through the rest of the period. Just in the short term, you can see some of the very, very warm runs, um, which, which are a possibility, say around 20 to 25% of them bringing that very warm air mass up from Southern Europe. Rainfall across the bottom, maybe an ongoing risk, I think, there. Towards the end, fewer spikes. It doesn't look overly wet through the week as a whole, but there could be some rain around. Also, drier periods, changeable, probably sums that up. The two meter uh, temperature data table for London. The reds early on there towards the end of week one and at the beginning of week two are highlighting the chance of that very warm um, incursion, which I've mentioned, but the trend is generally downwards, more of this lighter orange later on, the 16s to 20s, and the 21s to 25s decreasing. Although even towards the end there, there is a possibility, just quite a low one, of some very warm air returning. Now, we are at the time of year when, as well as talking about warm weather still, the possibility of nighttime frost starts to increase. Not really much sign of that at the moment. I've brought up this uh, graph which shows the minimum temperature forecasts from all of the runs at every time step from the GEFS and it is for the Scottish Highlands. Nought Celsius here, only a few runs dip below it from around the 17th of September. The huge majority are staying above the zero Celsius mark throughout the period. So I will keep an eye on this type of thing as we go forward through the rest of the month and into the deeper part of autumn. But at this stage, the frost risk remains very low, at least the air frost risk, so where temperatures are dipping below freezing point. Up to Manchester to 
see how things are doing in the northwest of the UK. So back to the 16 day GEFS plot showing air mass temperatures. Across the top, it's a very similar profile actually to the London one, above average to begin with, then dipping back towards it. Risk of rain is ongoing, not a washout, I would suggest, based on this data, but quite a changeable scenario. Up to Glasgow, and once more, the air temperature profile is very similar. It dips back towards the average after that somewhat warmer start, and the risk of rain continues throughout. There are more spikes here than there were on the London chart, I think, but to help analyze that, here are the data tables. So rainfall for London, breaking out all the individual runs in the ensemble for light gray, completely dry forecast at the given time period, dark gray, just small amounts of run, uh, rain, and then the other colors indicating greater amounts. So not particularly wet. If anything, the trend towards the end there may well be for it to begin turning drier once more increasingly settled. Manchester, the uh, more, more runs going for more significant amounts of rain through the second week. Doesn't look like a complete washout though by any means. And finally up to Glasgow. It's a little bit wetter than Manchester, which in turn was wetter than London, but quite a mixed scenario based on this data. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure chart from the ensemble mean. It's pointing towards an Atlantic flow at this stage, lower pressure as you head northwards. That ties in with the rainfall data tables with the wetter conditions being in the northwest. The ECM uh, comparable chart, very, very similar really. A westerly flow, southwesterly flow covering the UK typical for our part of the world. The anomaly chart for days 10 to 15, yellows to west and north there, indicating a positive anomaly, the blues a negative one, but the anomalies are not very, very strong. They're just weakly negative or weakly positive out for west. Quite all in all, taken over 10 to 15 day period as a whole, it's, it may well just be averaging out more extremes from the individual runs. So it's very difficult to read too much into this, but it's not taken at face value, suggesting a very unsettled scenario. Finally, the mean surface level pressure data table for York. The yellows increase. Those are runs going for 1,011 to 1,025 millibars. And through the last few days, some of the oranges show up. So 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. The trend is towards higher pressure. Again, adding evidence to the possibility of it turning more settled during the last third of the month. So to summarize, week one, it starts unsettled with downpours and longer spells of rain. Towards the weekend and into it, it probably turns drier. But beyond that, the indications are more changeable conditions begin to return. Although there is a good deal of uncertainty about the details. There is an approximately 20 to 30% chance of very warm air making its way into central and eastern Britain. That is certainly something to keep an eye on through the coming days. Week two, the focus is once more on mixed weather. After that potentially warm or even very warm start, temperatures dip back towards the average. By the end of the week though, high pressure may be starting to reassert itself. A drier end is a possibility. So uh, there we have it. Very mixed on the whole, very low confidence in the details, in large part because of the impact of the ex-hurricanes, how they interact with the jet stream in the North Atlantic, etc., etc. But I think changeable sums it up. There is that chance of very warm conditions for a time, something to keep an eye on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. 
If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.